Hey everyone, it's Brenda here from Survival Crafts. Well, today we are actually out at the uh, Painted Warriors Camp. This is my sister's ranch and we are doing a uh, an Essential Wilderness Survival Skills uh, weekend. I know I've been going on a lot about uh, doing soaps and all the other things I mentioned on the previous video, but because we've got students out today and we are running a course and it's a really nice unusually warm December day, I thought I'd take an opportunity to come out and film a little bit of the class. Uh, I thought you might want to have a look at where we do some of our outdoor stuff. So let's go find the students. Well, actually, before we do that, let's just take a little peek into the uh, into the camp. We've got, um, you can see there's almost no snow on the ground and, and it's really, really warm today. Uh, unusually warm for December. There's our instructor Dave looking like a Sasquatch moving through the trees there and um, coming up towards us now I think anyway but wanted to show you we've got our bear proof fence up here and it's not for bears <laughs> it's actually for the horses because they like to get into the tents that we have and they're worse than bears when they do that We've got our uh, Hungry Wolf Cafe, uh, named so from our friend Okan Hungry Wolf. Dave coming up. Better say hi to your YouTube audience, Dave. Ah, good day YouTube audience. <laughs> We're just going to go and find the students on camera and see what they're doing. There he is, beautiful little guy, just gorgeous. Hold my knife and see how, how it's darkening there, which means it's actually taking a minute etchings off the edge of my blade to enable me to, to sharpen it up. What, what is this again? Is that one is razor strop fungus. Razor strop fungus. fungus. And um, so, the chaga we're going to use for sure, and the inner inner skin of this, the amadou, takes some processing. I'm not too sure if I've got some here already processed. All right, so what we're going to be messing around with is tinder and charcoal. Now, typically, if you like to categorize something that's a tinder, a tinder is something that will catch a spark and glow. It won't burst into flames, it will glow. Then you can take that glowing mass and introduce it to kindling. Kindling is very fine wood or fine grass that will, after a certain amount of time, burst into flames. So this is char cloth, and in the old days, people would have tinder boxes. And this is an old tea box where I would put cotton in, and with the cotton, grab some jeans there if you want. Just sit in those. I use the, the jeans, 100% um, cotton shirts there. And I bundle that up, put it inside, put the lid back on, punch a hole in the top, and then I put this on the fire, and I leave it there to roast. After a short while, in extreme heat, you'll see a blue flame coming out the top and this is the gas burning off the materials that you put in here and once that blue fat flame starts sorry stops and burns out then you can take this off the fire lay it to one side and just leave it until it cools down and then it'll go it's that lovely black color so back in the days of the early pioneers here you can go into to various houses and just above the fireplace they would have old Hudson Bay Company tea boxes. In fact, Brenda and I went to an interpreter centre up north near Métis Crossing, Victoria Settlement. That's it. And the house in there, you go into the house and just above the fireplace they've got an old tea tin with HBC stamped in the side, which was which how this how they used to make the char cloth back in the day. Now this char cloth can be made in the field as well. You can take out small tins with you. Um, in my fire kit that I carry in my pack, I've got a little boot polish tin. 
that I've got I've got some cotton in there, char in there that I can use. So it's just another backup. Now, not only can you use cotton, it's got to be 100% cotton that you use. If you're trying to use man-made materials, it'll just melt. But you can also use plant material. So here's willow. Mm. And your punk wood works really well. Not only can you use that for fire lighting now, but of course, you play X and O's and stuff. <laughs> Keep yourself uh, occupied. Yeah. Do, do some artwork. Okay, I things. did that for guy do paint. Okay. So that's for my. So what we're going to do now is, is go out there. We're going to walk around. We're going to get some grass, but we're also going to look at some more natural materials that we're going to gather. So we le we need lots of them. And whenever we try and build a fire, we try and go big from the outset. Don't try and limit yourself to small little nests because we're going to be making bird's nests to, to light our fires with. We want to go like bald eagle, golden eagle nests. We don't want little chickadee nests because, because you can't waste your materials when you're out there in a survival environment. So go as big as you can right from the start. Right, really? All right, so let's get out there, let's get some grass, and then we need well, some other fibrous materials that we can use to, to make these fibers with. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's smoking the fish. Yeah. yeah. It's legal now. Tracy's going to bring yet. some um, Not yet. newspaper and some tissue. <laughs> Gasoline. <laughs> I'm going to go over the diesel tank over one here. One of the uh, plant side of this, the white. A white stalk, very hard to see. Okay. But that was traditionally gathered, ground into a powder, and used as an antiseptic powder. The whole plant is really antiseptic. And back to fire making. So when this is dry, it's great for fires. Uh, excuse me. But I'm trying to film here. <laughs> if it's wet out, this stuff soaks up the moisture. <laughs> We're trying to give a lesson here. Do you mind? <laughs> it soaks up the moisture from, from the air, so it does not work as well. But people always say, yeah, yeah, I always use lichen. Well, you can use lichen sometimes. But if it's wet, that'll be wet too. But you can put it in your pocket and store it and keep it for later. And that's the thing, whenever you're moving through the bush and you, and you know you're going to be arriving at your destination, well don't arrive at your destination and then make a fire, but while you're moving en route, if you see things that would be good for a fire, collect them and put them in your bag and harvest them on the way. Inside of the tree, that's the technical term, shreddy bits. Shreddy bits. Shreddy bits. Shreddy bits. It doesn't matter if it's really wet. You know, yeah, you want the dry stuff, but once again, if you want to plan for the future and it is wet, gather it and, and dry it out. And I use it later on. But when I get it, I break off that, that tough outer bark. And then process it in my hand. left with a very fine fibrous material. And the finer you can get that the better. And this, this with that ferro rod, this will catch the ferro rod. Oh, okay. I'll leave a bunch of very good brand of Oh I gotta get the ferro rod again. We've we've got actually we're, we're seeing all, all the horse manure around. If you get dry horse manure, that's good for fire lighting as well. Other stories. Here are the needles, pine needles. These are good to add as your kindling. You want to take a spark as well. But some long needles that come in bunches of two. The lodgepole pine. Needles from the lodgepole pine have four times more vitamin C. Nation's blue. So that. Hopefully, you know they're yours and you get them back. I, yeah, that's <laughs> one of the and then the other reason is that when you put them down, you don't lose them.
Half the rock goes. That's a good one. Nice. Nice. Give me that one. No way. <laughs> this one's mine. To have a long sweep, I'm going to go. I'm, all I'm doing at the moment is get, getting you to light sparks. Nothing else. I want you to have to make sparks. But it, it's a long drop I'm using. Just a relaxed motion. I'm not no, pushing it hard. Mine. I'm just trying to skim the edge of the rock here. So there's no, no hard <laughs> pressure. Not, not bearing down on it. Just let it skim the edge of the rock and make sparks. There he goes. It's just glowing. Can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's enough. So I'm going to put it in there. Put my flint and steel down. Put my other glove on. Just push that in. Take this up. And then envelop lightly the char in the center. The char -car. I can hold this up and blow. What I like to do is to hold this up high so that my long hair does not get caught in the flames. <laughs> if I held it forward, there is the danger that my long hair could go into the actual flames here or the glowing embers. Also, uh, I try and get it so the wind is behind me. So, okay, you can see the smoke going that way. Have it this way and, and then I won't get the wind and smoke <laughs> in my face. Sorry, Brenda. It's a steady, long blast from between your pursed lips. <laughs> what if they're suckle? <laughs> <laughs> so while Dave is doing this, a couple things I'll say is that you'll notice he's not blowing so hard that there's moisture coming. And which way do the flames go? They go upwards. So if you're holding that down below your face, below your face, which way will the flames go? Down. <laughs> exactly. Up into your face. Can have a round of applause then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little bit in there. Okay. Then you're going to have piece top and bottom mm -hmm. sandwiching your the rock there. Right, gotta say a prayer to the fire spirits. Oh fire spirits. Oh fire Don't spirits. Don't let me down. Oh I'm fire spirits. <laughs> Alright, ready with okay. more. And then just stay away from that bundle. And you can even stand up and just get into a comfortable position because as soon as that's glowing it's it's not gonna go out. That's the catchy bit, trying to hold it and figure out. <laughs> yeah, trying to keep this away from the edge. I think this is... <laughs> quite, quite often what I'll do is I hold it, see that knuckle? Yeah. I sandwich it like that. Okay. That's hard to have these gloves. <laughs> if those gloves don't work, I'll give you the, the smaller ones. It just takes a lot of practice. This is all the fire... I can't get this one. Go for it. Go for it when it looks good. Alright. So if you know you've got a good steel, and you just turn to walk around, you know, anywhere there's a bunch of rocks and stuff out, you start picking them up, any sharp edge. You can need to hold this a little bit closer. Okay. The knife slips, you have a chance of cutting your fingers. Yeah, let's try that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, this glove feels a lot better. Cool. Very light. And then once you get the angle, you get a little bit harder and you get a spark. You get a spark, you have to the angle. Otherwise, all you want to do is just roll this just ever so slightly. You're basically using this to shimminate the char cloth. Right? Because you don't need the char cloth if you're terrible. Oh, yes. there we go. There we go, see? And, that, and that's a good example. It was, it was the yeah. poor char cloth. Got it, guys! Oh. Okay, other glove, other glove. Oh, finally. And there's no rush here at all. It'll just... And so you just 
Yeah. Pull, pull that, pull around the side to there and just envelop around. That's good. That's all you need, and now you can blow in it. And you've got to throw it onto the fire, onto your right. So bring it close to you, a little bit closer. Blow, and then, and then kind of push it up into the air again, as though you're praying to the, to the fire gods. I'm praying to the fire gods. And you see smoke coming soon. There goes the smoke. Standing by. Woo! Yeah!